Your eye is not a camera. That's what I want you to think about when you create your next 3D scene, which is why we're going to be looking at the composition of this image that I've chosen as I discuss my approach to creating this beautiful, beautiful scene from The Boy and the Heron, which is Hayao Miyazaki's latest and likely final movie. Which short is what he said before, but it's, it's getting more and more real, guys. And I've chosen this scene for a few different small reasons. One is that it has this really, really beautiful and intricate sky, which is made using kind of like watercolor style um, painting techniques. And I think that that's going to be quite difficult to achieve in 3D, and that's kind of going to be like my challenge point for this render. Alright, so let's break it down. Immediately, we're splitting it into the rule of thirds. These kind of four points marked in green are the sorts of places where our eyes are going to kind of naturally be having our attention drawn to. Mahito isn't actually on one of these like kind of like dots, but he's in proximity, and that's kind of the important thing. Now, I want you to notice the character, alright. Now, he's looking off to the left here, and now there's a concept in film and in games or just any kind of art involving a character called looking room. Take a look at this, for instance. It's looking this way, and we have all of this room basically for him to look at. Not not exactly what he's looking at, because he's going to be looking at something all the way off over here, but we've got like a good sense of direction and a good sense of flow to the image because his eyes sort of leading us over the image, and it's comfortable, it's a comfortable feeling. However, take a look at a scene like this. This is from Mr. Robot, I'm pretty sure. Now his eyes are looking here, and as you can see, th there's no <laughs> there's no relief, there's nothing here, and we've got all of this antagonizing empty space over here, and it gives this impression that the character is sort of unseated in this world. And now, I don't want to get too English essay on this, but without spoiling anything, Mehito in this scene is sort of, he's in a new, unfamiliar place, and he's exploring, and yeah, so just think of um, every aspect of the image, including composition, and especially composition, because it's like, as, it's not a very difficult thing to do in 3D because you can just kind of bash things around and move them around quite easily. So really do think about how you can tell a story and a narrative through your composition like this shot does so well. This um, blend file, this entire scene with packed textures and everything is all up on my Ko-Fi and it is free for members. So for all of um, you guys who are already subscribed on here, you guys can pick this up straight away for no cost at all. And so the nice thing about being subscribed is you can just keep grabbing new stuff and old stuff and it's all just going to kind of build up into a collection. Alright, so moving on, we're going to be discussing leading lines in this picture. So the first one that I want us to pay attention to is the slope. This kind of nice gradual slope is going to be important to capture in our render. The slope runs your eye down it, like water, and straight into Mojito. Because obviously the slope is taking up a large proportion of the image, and so your eye's probably <laughs> actually going to, for a nanosecond, land on the slope first. Now what I mean when I say that, is that your eye cannot take in everything at once. And that is why we must design an image composition intelligently in order to have the viewer's eye look at the intended things in the intended order and with the intended amount of focus as well. Now obviously with a disclaimer that you're not going to be able to psychologically trick every single one of a thousand people to look at your image in the same way. But you want to design it in a way that even two thirds of them will get a similar kind of like nice viewing experience. This is what makes composition important, because if everything has the same visual weight, it's unpleasant and kind of confusing because your eye doesn't know where to go, and so it just kind of goes everywhere one by one arbitrarily. If there's a clear path, it's much more pleasant, and you can get across your message to your viewer a lot easier. The other leading lines that I want to point out are these god rays. These god rays are all pointing down into an angle, and where does the angle go? To Mihito. It kind, of, it kind of brings us to Mihito, and it kind of goes in the direction of the way he's looking and creates a sense of flow and um, sort of like rhythm to the image. Like there's a, there's a direction, like if I was to draw a red arrow, everything's, everything's kind of going that way. Right to left. I don't want to yap too much, so we're just going to kind of like go with that. But you can kind of see how it is relatively important that you try and understand at least some of what's going on with the image beforehand so you know what is and isn't important to bring through to the render. For instance, if I add a bunch of little rocks throughout the sand here, that is going to be ever so slightly distracting, but it's not going to take away too much. If we remove all of these god rays and just have a blank background, now the sky's suddenly no longer interacting with the composition the same, but don't don't get analysis paralysis and try and understand absolutely everything. Like As always, thank you so very much to all of my loyal supporters. Smittering for the long time subscription. Dylan Heisler for being an absolute legend and being my one and only um, YouTube based subscriber. I'm deeply appreciative of that. Um, you guys are all killing it. So I'd like to give you guys some more entertainment, some more material. 
with that. Thank you so very much for watching. It's been Yizen, and goodbye.